We have had more hat tricks than a magic show since you last here. We've had three of them. It's been mad. Goals have been flowing. Those are hat tricks for us, by the way. But we haven't won in our last two games, and today we are back to take on Ebb's Fleet, who are currently in third, and Bognor Regis in fifth. We sit sixth place, and I want to say pretty in the playoffs, but that would be far from the reality of it. We are still very much slugging it out. Two more important games today. Hopefully, two games we're going to win. Yes, folks, how is it going? Welcome back to Park to Prem. Welcome back to episode number 22. I had to glance down at my second screen to check what episode we're on. It is definitely episode 22, and today is Friday, if I've kept track of the days that the videos are going up correctly. I think it's Friday. If it's not Friday, let me know what day of the week you're watching this. As I've already said, two games to be played today against Ebbs Fleet and Bognor Regis. Hopefully two games we will be able to get results in. Quite a lot's been happening off the pitch, and I think today's a nice chance, now that we're in February, to kind of evaluate the season so far. Who's performing well? Who's not performing perhaps so well? As we go into that crunch point in the season, we're 66% of the way through the games, there's not that many left. Of course, last episode, we played four games in one episode. It was quite the feat. There were lots of goals. The last game, a weird one, an amazing one in many ways. And I was hoping it was going to give us a little bit of momentum. And that it did. Having beaten Slough 7-0, we beat Gloucester 2-0, Western Supermare 3-0, and then Dartford 5-0. Um, I want to show the goals in the Western Supermare game because Katongo, this man, got an outrageous hat trick. And the bizarre thing in this game is... He didn't even start the match. NLBM picked up an injury in the first five minutes. Fortunately, it was just a very slight couple of day long injury. But Katongo had to take off his training kit, get on the pitch. The first two goals, you might sit there and go, yeah, they were all right. Wait until you see the third goal. Now you can understand why I've decided to show this. Gallagher put in a ball of quality. And then how about this for a finish for a first half hat trick? Yeah, it wasn't too bad. That was a seven-minute hat-trick, by the way. Truly outrageous stuff. And with those goals, it finished 3-0. Like I already said, we won the very next game 5-0 as well. The goals are flowing. Katongo got another hat-trick, by the way. I'll spare you the goals in this one, although it wasn't quite as quick as his previous hat-trick. It was still a pretty impressive performance by this man. Uh, he's played these two games where he's done amazingly. In the three games since... Uh, he, he's not been very good by comparison. The first of those three games was a win against Bilariki, and in fact, in this game, it was NLBM who picked up a hat-trick. Yeah, the goals have been crazy. NLBM had nine goals in the month of January. He, he's had a good time, really. 22 goals to his name in the league, but he really has caught on fire as of late and just been absolutely insane for us. Unfortunately, it doesn't matter how good NLBM plays because in the next game, we lost 4-2. If you concede four goals, you're not really going to win all that often. We lost against Tunbridge Angels. In this game, we did play a rotated team. Nolan at left back, Crow at right back, Evan slotted in in the middle. Truth be told, just a bad day at the office. I say that. Look at the XG. Look at the XG. We just didn't have our shooting boots on. Kitongo probably should have had a hat-trick in this game as well. Most recently, we took on Weymouth, where we did come back from a goal down to get a point. An unlikely goal scorer as well. Carlos on off the bench in this one. Got a goal. Things we love to see. Not exactly had an amazing time so far at the club. The 20-year-old battling lots of injuries. Never really had a chance to get a run of games in the first team. It was great to see him score in this one. And unfortunately, having not winning two, we now have a game against Ebbsfleet, who for ages this season have been in second they are now third they are a team that started the season really really well but they have lost their last three games in all competitions two of which were in the league as a result of that they have slipped down of course by comparison our season has leveled off a little bit recently I feel like there was a period where we were kind of chasing down the playoffs but since kind of game week 19 we've been in and around there for the most part another team worth having your eye on is the team that we have um, in our second game today which is Bodna Regis they have been right up there in the league, Bodner Regis. They were promoted with us last year. They won the playoffs in the league that we were in. Of course, we finished way above them. Apparently, they strengthened their team better than I strengthened my team during the offseason. They've had a very solid uh, resumption, I suppose, to their time in the Vanarama National League, having previously been a little bit of a yo-yo team. Just to look at our squad performances, the real standout thing has been our goal scoring, especially as of late. NLBM is the top goal scorer with 26 goals to his name. Farquad, by comparison, 
not been doing quite as well. With Katongo being in some good form, he's dropped out the team and not been playing quite as often. You can see here, sprained wrist ligaments this uh, season, many missed a few weeks. And that was really at a time where we had a lot of games in quick succession, just last episode, in fact. Like I said, with Katongo playing well, it's been difficult to play Farquad. So he has dropped off lately, but I think he will start today. I've said his name ahead of a lot, but Katongo up there in double figures for goals as well. In behind them, Gianluca Rossi and Willux doing pretty well by all accounts. Rossi's form as of late has been amazing, as has his performances in the centre of the midfield. By comparison, Willux, who was a bit of a hero last episode, he had that one amazing game against Slough where he got three assists. I've played him in six games since and he's not got above a seven rating. That is a bit concerning because if we just look at our team and our form in the last five games... Plenty of players have been playing very well as of late. One man who has been a bit of a game changer for us this year has been Harry Kite. The centre defence in mid has come in. He is on a lot of our set pieces. He's not exactly the craziest set piece taker in the world, but in our team he is rather good. And at 25 years old, he has eight assists in 18 starts, which for a, a, you know, a more defensive midfielder, not the playmaker type, is a really, really impressive return. And certainly his addition to the team has been great. McDonald as well has added that little bit of stability this season. Eight clean sheets in 21, a 7.17 rating, impressive for the goalkeeper and of course the centre-back area an area of concern Roscoe had a really rough start to his time with the club he then really got on the straight and narrow and then he went through another rough patch to be honest which did result in me dropping him for a game or two since he was dropped he's come back with a plum in the last four games he has been great at left centre-back and over at right centre-back, Morgan Williams has also been doing well. He's been rotated a little bit as of late. We've had a lot of games going on. It's a long season. But when he's played, he has been ever-reliable. A 7.28 rating for this man. I think he has been a really, really valuable pickup, which I think does apply to all the players we've signed during this season. I do feel like they are the primary reason we have levelled out as a team this year and really been able to remain laser-focused on the playoff spots. In terms of off-the-pitch shenanigans, there is a little bit going on. Players wanting to move on, players who I've replaced but then maybe not lowered their play time when I should have done, which is entirely on me. A few players I might have told them I was going to sell them and then not sold them and their contracts are running down anyway and I just didn't want to sell them for nothing. One such example is Zach Atkinson. His contract's up at the end of the year. There's been interest in him, but no one wants to pay any money and I'd rather just have him as a squad option around. He's not taken that very well. Elsewhere in the team, Dylan Crow is absolutely fuming. He is our highly influential player. He's announced his intention to leave at the end of his contract this year. I just can't give him the game time he wants. He's just not good enough at right back. When we've played him, he's played okay, but he's not really lived up to the Dylan Crow name that was established last Park to Prem. This is why I don't sign the same players in multiple save games. It's never as good the second time around. A couple of other players are a little bit unhappy with their playtime. Older players who have just been phased out of the squad, like I've already mentioned. Matthew Nolan is one such player. His contract is up at the end of next season. I will keep him around for sure. I think he's a really useful squad player to have. I would like to make him happy in an ideal world and hopefully keep him around. Livingston is in a very similar boat. The 22-year-old when we signed him was absolutely phenomenal. It's not kind of the same anymore. He's just not as good as he used to be. I mean, I say that. He's not really got worse. The rest of the team has just got much, much better. And between his inconsistency, his hate of hatred of big matches, injury proneness, and just all the other negatives you can see here, he's just a bit of a pace merchant, which isn't really what I need anymore. He's not happy about it. His contract runs out at the end of next year. Kind of just want to sell him for £5,000. Waiting for someone to bid that for him. So far, the only offer I've had was for £0 and I had to keep paying his wages. As I've gone through the list of unhappy players, I'm starting to realise maybe I've downplayed it a little. Because Ellis Vaughan is unhappy as well. He's been unhappy for a while. He's been out in the town getting pissed. He's been missing training a little bit recently as well through similar reasons. He's not even started for us this season. He's one of those players who, when we first joined the club, I thought he was amazing. I was really hoping he was going to grow with the team. And the reality is... He just got worse as a footballer. Since we've signed him, you can see it here. Look at the red arrows. Look at the angry numbers. He's just not that great. I kind of want to sell him for some big money whilst I can. He's got loads of time left on his contract. I might just keep him around as some kind of virtual punch bag who I can just treat badly to cheer me up when football manager doesn't treat me so nice. Today's two games are really pivotal for us. Having not won in our last two, but prior to that been on a really, really good run of form, it's time to get back on the straight and narrow, try and find a little bit of the form that really saw us shoot up the league and really improve our goal difference. We kept a load of clean sheets, scored a load of goals, 
and having only scored one goal last game, hoping for a change around in fortunes. In terms of team news, this is the team that we're going to go with. I think it has a fairly standard look. The one surprise might be to see Katongo out on the left-hand side. In all honesty, Willicks has just been really hit and miss recently, not been performing all that well. Katongo's played amazing as a striker, but with Farquad fit and me wanting to play him more, the only way I can get Katongo into the team is to play him in the wide areas. Six minutes into this game, an early chance perhaps for one team to seize the initiative, and it could be us. NLBM, one-on-one, -on -one, difficult angle. I'll tell you what, it might have been a difficult angle. That does not excuse that finish. That was awful. Early stages of this game, we are dominating the ball. Just that one chance, the only highlight we've seen so far. A disappointing finish at the end of it. Hoping that we're going to be able to craft out a few better opportunities, perhaps, than that one that NLBM had. But as we, well, almost approach the half an hour mark here, not a great deal happening. But now, Osborne with a throw into Farquad. We've been on top in this game. Can we find a breakthrough? Farquad tries to get into the middle. Only one man to aim for there in NLBM. It wasn't the best of balls, although it wasn't exactly an easy situation the striker found himself in. Ebsfleet now looking to go long. Despite the fact Ebsfleet have struggled in the last few games, make no mistake, they are a very good team. They are one of only a few teams with wages higher than ours across their squad. So they have quality, they have money, they have ability, but we also have all three of those things. And while we also have Kitongo in the box, he's going to get to the byline, pull it back, and Kyle Farquad's there for goal number 17 of the season. And maybe the decision to play the right-footed Kitongo at left winger is going to prove to be an inspired decision because it worked okay there, I think, by all accounts. It wasn't the best of balls in. Farquad, a player who's not all that good in the air in terms of his heading and jumping, but his reading of the game always makes it feel like he gets into just good positions where he can take advantageous aerial duels, just like that one. He's not done any dancing today, but he's wheeled away in celebration. And yeah, half an hour played here, what on top and deservedly so. And it could get from bad to worse for Epsley. The ball's whipped in. Williams heads it into the side netting. Didn't really talk about it earlier, but if you were wondering, Jack, how close are you to Maidstone, who are top of the league? We're 11 points away from them. Despite a really good run of form, we've not closed them down. Although, you know what? If we can just keep winning and keep having players finish like they are in this game, maybe we could chase them down at the end. Probably won't, though. That they're, they're, they're quite good. That was a good finish, by the way. NLBM, take a bow. Who was it who played the ball forward here? Was it Farquad? The goal scorer turning provider, uh, a difficult ball to be fair, the chip through ball and the finish at the end of it. I mean, he's made the keeper sit down there. That was rude. I really am developing a soft spot for Kitongo. He's gone from being the player who can't finish whenever the camera's on him to being a player who seems to score whenever you guys bugger off. And then when you are around, now he gets assists and stuff. I think he scored one goal during a live commentary, which really isn't a great return considering how many matches we've covered this season. I can't judge him for being camera shy, though. I didn't use a camera in my Football Manager videos for like seven years, so who am I to judge what people do on or off camera? Lavery for them. Going long, I mean, that is... I was going to say it's an ambitious ball. It's a deluded ball. If he thinks he can pull off a pass like that, he needs to reevaluate his ability. He is not good enough to do that there, centre-back. We do have the ball. I suppose I shouldn't talk too much rubbish just yet. There's still half an hour left in this game. Williams with the ball, trying to pick out NLBM. It's won well by them. Far on the far side, trying to bring it inside. Rossi, though, nips in. Of course, we had the away day to Ebb's Fleet earlier on in the season. I criticised their stadium for looking like a shed, but praise their car wash. I mean, at the moment, they deserve no praise for their performance today. They have been poor, although... Well, I was about to say, although they, they've just scored. They haven't just scored. They've hit the woodwork. It's come to the rescue. We've got it away from danger. And I'm going to stop talking rubbish about them. A couple of players on bookings here. Roscoe has had a good performance. I want to take him off because he's on a yellow and he's apparently deserved his yellow card. But he's playing confident. He's got a good rating. His well, condition isn't exactly ideal. Iwamene, though, on a booking I do not like to see. We're going to drop Rossi deeper and bring in Mary out on that right-hand side. It's really weird with Gianluca Rossi. Of course, he is our best player in terms of technical ability. He's a player who, on the face of it, should play better out on the right wing. But when I play him in the middle, I feel like he just does more for us. I feel like he's able to have a bit more of an influence on the game. We'll see how he does there in this game here. Of course, if he now is responsible for us conceding a goal, ignore what I've just said immediately. Two goals up still. Limited time left. Really, absolutely need to score. You'd argue in the next five or so minutes to really stand a chance of making the comeback happen. Speaking of which, Hudson is making his way into the box. He's already hit the woodwork once. And, uh, I mean, that is a disappointing ending to what was actually quite a nice run. 
Katongo on an 8.1, Farquad on an 8.0. We are playing really, really well here. I will just make a couple of changes. I think this game is all said and done now. Let's bring in Carlos, the Spanish forward, for a little bit of game time just to see out this game. Probably not going to be able to have much of an impact on things, but it's a really good performance, this one. A 2-0 home win. The kind of game we need to win. Great to keep a clean sheet. Great to get a couple against Ebbsfleet. And to be honest... It never really looked in doubt. With that result, we have moved up to fourth place. Ebbsfleet down in sixth now all of a sudden. So at one point, they were the team alongside Maidstone. They have fallen like a stone. Um, looking at Maidstone United, they won 3-0 against Weymouth, who are the team outside the playoffs. What that does mean is we have a six-point cushion all of a sudden to them in eighth. And also worth noting, our goal difference of 36. Because of some of the big wins we've had this year, that goal difference really has got out of control. Our second game today is against Bognor Regis. They're in fifth. We're in fourth. This is a rather important game. A win here. I really start to believe the playoffs is where we're going to be come the end of the year. Can we make it happen? It's away from home. It's going to be tough. Don't go anywhere. I'm aware Bognor Regis is an away game for us. Now, behind the curtain here, and I have acknowledged this having in a previous video or definitely in the comments, I already took Bognor Regis on away from home last season. And when I went to do the Jack Dozen away day, it was genuinely the worst Jack Dozen away day ever. There was nothing to see, so it didn't even make the cut of the video. But today, I'm going to show you what you can see so you can understand why you didn't see it before and also why I view Bognor Regis as an enemy of the people. The fact that they denied you a Jack Dozen away day, it makes them the baddies. I don't care what anyone says. Now, Bognor Regis is not far away from Guernsey. Here's where we are. Bognor Regis is just on the coast, just uh, west of Worthing. I actually don't know where the football pitch is. I probably should have checked this before I hit the start record button. Okay, so here is the Bognor Regis Stadium. It, here it is. I mean, it's not exactly the most sexy of stadiums, is it? But if I go on street, Google Street View, the only bit we can go to is here. I mean, you get a little bit of a view of the stadium, I suppose, but you don't really see enough. I mean, there's a digger and then there's just a, a wall. It, like, it, it's, I don't want to slate it as an away day option. I just don't think it's that good. I mean, they, they have a clothes and shoes kind of donation bit. So I guess that's nice of them. Also, are they, I was about to say, are they sponsored by Nike and Adidas? Imagine if you were sponsored by both of those. That would be quite the achievement. I mean, look, here it is. You can judge it for what it is. Uh, it does have painted lines to the car park, but you, ju you just can't see very much. I mean, if anyone from Google is watching, please just get street view for the rest of this little road. You know, maybe maybe there's something interesting, a good view we could get the stadium. As things stand, though, that doesn't exist. Also, having this as the entrance to your football stadium should be a crime. Not only is that a poor font and poor logo design, it looks like the entrance to a theme park ride. Did you guys ever play Roller Coaster Tycoon as a kid? You know, you have the little gate with the name of the ride. It looks like that. Not a fan. Anyway, now that I've finished just getting out some frustrations towards the the lovely area of Bognery, just never been, I'm sure it's a lovely town, um, we, we now have to beat them in a game of football. Uh, one little bit of team news today. Unfortunately, Iwamene is suspended. He's been a naughty boy. He's got too many yellow cards this year, so Osborne is going to return to his natural habitat of box-to-box -box midfielder. Dylan Crow comes in at right back. Despite that change though everything else is unchanged we've only been playing a couple of days ago but players recovered well Kitongo I think has earned another chance out on that left hand side and I think when you look at the average ratings for the last five games and how well everyone's playing it's kind of hard to justify changing it I will say I do enjoy the fact that in this year's football manager and I don't really remember this happening before I have had a situation where Bonga Regis who were in the same league as us last year got promoted with us have actually been able to keep in touching distance with me. Despite the improvements we've made to our team, they've made similar improvements. And as two newly promoted teams, to find ourselves in fourth and fifth is just kind of cool. I don't remember seeing that much in football manager in the past. So yeah, well done to Bognor Regis and to Sports Interactive for actually making a compelling rivalry with a team that are climbing up the leagues with us. It's not exactly been a classic opening 10 minutes. Couple of chances. Bognor Regis, um, you can see having more of the shots. We're having a lot of the ball, but the possession we're having is in very, very deep areas because we're looking to play the ball out from the back constantly. I think that's causing us some issues. With that in mind, I'm going to tell the players to be a bit more direct, try and get the ball forward into space a little bit more, but to hit it over the top with them playing a higher line and pressing us hard up the pitch might be some gaps in behind by suddenly going direct to exploit. I say all of that, having made that change, nothing has happened and we're half an hour in. Any plans for anything to happen before half-time, football manager? 
Anything at all. I'll take anything. No, other than them scoring. Let's not have that. Anything? One minute added time. Nothing. Uh, one of the worst first halves I can remember. I mean, our performance has been bad. At least they've had shots. Not going to throw a water bottle, but I am going to point my finger and say I'm disappointed. Look at that. Fired up. That's what I want to see. I'm looking at Farquad. I'm looking at NLBM thinking 6.3, 6.2 ratings. Unacceptable. Let's change things up here. Will Murray come on in that inside forward role. I feel like he's had his best performances for us in that area of the pitch. With that change, we'll move Kite to play on defend. Elsewhere, Osborne on a booking isn't exactly ideal. So I'm going to drop Rossi deeper. And you know what? I'm going to change things up. Katongo's going to go on the right. I'm bringing in Carlos. We've not seen Carlos very much this year. He scored on off the bench in our last kind of game before this episode against Weymouth. Let's give him a chance here. Free kick in a dangerous area. We need to do some defending here. This is not what we want to see. Bogner Regis hit it. It's gone over the bar. I mean, at least we've had a highlight. I did set up Bogner Regis denies the enemy of the people this episode. The people denying you the, the away day. And uh, I feel like they've really lived up to that kind of boring uh, personification I've given the football club. They've not given us any action on the pitch here. I mean, I say that. They've been the team having all the chances. But as they push on the attack as the home team, I think there might be an opportunity to catch them out, especially with the fresh legs we've bought on. I say all of that. They're the team on the attack. Wishart goes with the ball. I'll tell you what, Williams, Williams done very well to win that there. Goes long to Lamb. Lamb launches it forward. Kitongo, big ball over the top. That spacing behind I discussed. Farquad's there. One on one. Hits it and it hits the crossbar and goes over. In fact, I think there was a block on it. We've actually got a corner off the back of all of that. It's Dylan Crow over it. Dylan, can we have a moment of brilliance? We've hit the other post. We've hit the woodwork twice in the space of two minutes. And it's still nil-nil. I'm going to go for a shout of demand more. It's time to get shouty-shouty. Another highlight. Suddenly the game's springing into action. Two tiring teams. Two teams you aren't really going to want to settle for the draw. Let's not give away a penalty. Oh my word. What has just happened? I think it's away from danger. I think that got kicked against our own player's head and then hit the crossbar. If that had gone in, I would have been livid. Right, 10 minutes left. Kitongo. You know what? Kitongo. Go and play as another striker, mate. Let's just play with three strikers. Pressing forward on a, on attack. Yeah, on attack. Uh, in possession. Focus down the left. Focus down the left. Gallagher, go complete forward on attack, mate. Go and make something magical happen. We're going to just try and cro cross it in early from the left-hand side. That is the new game plan. I still have one sub left. You know what? Farquad, off you come. Merry into the middle. We're just going to try and get it on the left and cross it in. It's a set play when they inevitably score down our right-hand side where there are no players. Don't blame me. Five minutes of added time. Is there a late twist? I've gone to three strikers. I've tried to make something happen. Nothing is happening. Or is it? Dylan Crow on the right. It's a long throw in. Roscoe's not there. Can we get the ball back? Rossi into the mix. So we've got so many men forward. Gallagher, this is our play. Down the left-hand side. Put the ball in. Willick's the sub. There's three men in the middle. It's in the back of the net. It's hit the defender and gone in. I am a tactical genius. I will, I will take a bow now. I will take a bow. It's, it's brilliant. We've been awful today. We've not had many games like this this season where we managed to steal away the result. We've absolutely done that here. 94 minutes on the clock and then some Willocks to the byline. There's so many players in the box, they can't pick them all up and it's just deflected off Freeman. Ended up in the back of the net. And having had a few games this year where we've dropped points being unlucky, we've got very lucky in this game. We've won 1-0 despite being the second best team throughout in thanks largely to an own goal. Although my tactical changes, genius. Two clean sheets today. Two wins and Maidstone drew against Ebb's Fleet, who we just beat. And with that, we're suddenly up to second and nine points behind them with 13 games left. I might have gone a bit too far doing the whole bowing, but I look, tactical genius. You can't argue with it. Two clean sheets in two games, two wins in two games. The fans are loving it. I'm loving it. We're having a great old time. Wasn't exactly how I expected today's episode to go, but you know what? We'll take it. Not the most crazy games for high goal scoring, but two massive results, which... I'm hoping maybe give us a chance of pushing Maidstone towards the end of the year. At the very least, at least right now, we find ourselves in a great position to make the playoffs. And that is not something I've been able to say at any point this season. Not entirely sure when we're going to be back next time. It might even be that we come back for the playoffs if we're looking nailed on for that 
and the possibility of finishing top isn't there. That said, with the quality we're showing, the defensive strength we're showing, we're putting ourselves in a really good spot to end this season on the high, hopefully take some of this momentum into the post-season. If you have enjoyed today's episode, do make sure to drop a like on it. Your support is massively appreciated as always. Just as a little reminder, there will be an episode tomorrow, so make sure to come back here, same time and place for more Park to Prem action. Until then, take it easy. It is me, Jack, and I'll see you on the next one. I'm out.